Good morning. Today we shall discuss on software evolution, evolution processes. After attending this session, you will understand and appreciate need and importance of software evolution process. You will understand and appreciate importance of integrating software evolution in a spiral model. You will understand and appreciate different types of evolution processes. So, what is software evolution? After we build any software and software based system, we are going to deploy and make it operational. When you make it working in an in envir environment and people start using it and if any environmental changes happen, then there can be many challenges to this particular software. So, if we have to get value out of such a software, we must make it operational and we have to ensure that that particular software continues to be useful and it is going to be relevant and it is of some value. Most of these softwares across the world are actually absorbing 65 to 95 percent of the organizational costs towards evolution costs. And most of these software and systems are having a life of 3 to 20 years of time. And we have to ensure that during this particular duration, they work by taking different changes. And after that, we may replace it by next version of the software or system. Whenever we want to make software to evolve, to incorporate changes, to continue its operation, then we have to basically ask three important questions which help us in making it operational, useful relevant and is of some business value. The first question we ask is what to add, because if we have to make the software system to continue its operation to fulfill the users expectations as well as customers needs and wants then we have to ensure some changes happen, so that the system continues to address those needs. To do that, we may have to add to add some changes into the system. So, we should ask first question is what to add. Second question that we have to ask is what to remove? Many a times organization may undergo some restructuring 
and at that time part of the system we may be selling to different company at that time the software built to align with the operation of that particular division or function need to be removed from the existing software that is working in the company. So, at that time what to remove that we have to decide. Third question is what to modify certain business rules may change like in banking there can be some changes in uh, certain uh, government rules and regulations and we have to incorporate those rules and regulations in the form of processes which are running in the form of algorithms. So, if we have to do that then we have to decide on what to modify like this what to add and what to remove and what to modify these are the questions we go on asking to evolve the software to make it more relevant. And where these changes come from? So, because if we want to add something, modify something or remove something then there must be some trigger which may be coming from the user or customer or from something else. So, we can majorly see such changes that are triggering the software evolution are coming from business changes or they may be coming from new user requirements, user may be demanding for something new or there can be some errors which may be required to be addressed when we deploy any software then possibly errors may be causing the system either inoperational or it may be malfunctioning or there can be some of the parts of the system that might have been paralyzed. So, we have to change the system to overcome such discrepancies or we may be getting the uh, new platform to which our system has to adapt. The system might have been built for Microsoft window platform. There is a need to make the system operational on Linux platform as well. Like that there can be changes where we have to make the system operational on new the operational platforms or we may be getting new non-functional requirements like uh, if there are some security threats we are expecting from the hackers then possibly there is a requirement to provide enough security to our system or during the peak performance if we think that or if we experience that the system is very slow it is not responding as expected then there can be requirement to improve the performance or there is a software system working in uh, the domains like automotive and if, if we think that the system is not built for safety or reliability then there can be possibility of change request coming to incorporate such safety and reliability features into the system. So, that also may trigger in some change like this first one is business changes where our competitors may be having better features than our software and system and we are forced to bring in those features into our product or the entire world has moved from earlier type of traditional systems towards entirely new operating environment that we, we, we had seen in the revolution of android immediately word has moved into the android platforms as far as the mobile the software systems are concerned. So, that is one of the business challenge that we had to address in a quickest fashion like that lot of business changes may be coming. So, like this the business changes 
new user requirements errors found or making the system adaptable or the new non functional requirements all are coming as a triggers and at the end of these triggers we want to evolve the software and we come out with new software either by adding or by removing or by modifying some of the aspects in the current existing system now when we try to do this thing then we should think about how the current systems are working we cannot do such software evolution to make the system operational in a independent manner or isolation manner because most of the systems by nature are interdependent the systems are having a lot of subsystems and these subsystems are actually working together to deliver some functionality the system evolution cannot be isolation majorly because of two reasons number 1 what we call as brownfield software so here if we look at it the systems whatever you develop and deploy do not work independently if they have to work they have to connect with some other existing systems for example if we are rolling out some payment related payroll related software this payroll related software that we have built has to be connected with the human resource management system and also it has to connect with some banks and other things at that time the system that we built payroll system cannot work in isolation we have to do something to connect it with the existing human resource management system and also to the banking system with which the organization is having an understanding about making the payment of its employees the second thing is the system rich environment as days are progressing communication technologies heterogeneous computation different types of uh, protocols and different types of data representations all such things are to be connected and made interoperational and they have to work the system has to work under a heterogeneous environment of uh, different hardware software operating system and databases and all such things so this also is causing major issue in software evolution so when we undertake the software evolution at that time we should ensure that there is a proper strategy that is being put in place to ensure the complexities that are evolving out of brownfield software and also complexities that are emerging out of system rich environment so under this without making our software isolating is, uh, the working in isolation we have to interconnect with other things and make it operational and if we have to evolve such a software to make it operational useful relevant and of business value then there can be different approaches that are available to us the first approach available to us is spiral model of development and evolution second one is software maintenance third approach is operation and evolution of custom software fourth one is customization and 
operation of productized solution and fifth one is software evolution and servicing. When we want to select any of these approaches, we should uh, always study the nature of the product that has to undergo the evolution, the development environment, then roles and responsibilities of developing organization and that of the system or uh, organization that is going to use the software that we are providing and the type of resources and contract agreement and so on. So, by considering these aspects we have to choose any of these approaches. Now, let us see first approach software evolution approach spiral model of development and evolution. Here we take a set of requirements and then we implement it using a software development life cycle and then we integrate the final system and once this implementation is over then we have to validate it against originally agreed upon set of requirements. If the system is validating which usually we keep track by using traceability metrics in the software development life cycle. If we think that the requirements are being fulfilled then we are interested in deploying it and make it operational. Like this a set of requirements are finally being converted into the product that is operational. So, when we do that by the time we complete our project of release 1 already we might have sensed need for improving this system or there can be some business requirements or business driven changes that may be coming to us or there can be some errors or defects that we might have sense which are not being addressed at the time of uh, releasing and making it operational. Now, we want to take up or new set of changes may be coming by taking any of these sources we are creating the requirements for release 2 and we specify such requirements. So, when we talk about specification it is a documented reviewed approved formal agreement between what has been expected and must to have and what has to be delivered. So, when we say specification it is always a documented reviewed approved formal the document. We take this such specification and then we start our release 2. We implement all the requirements and we validate it are there any requirements that we agreed for release 2 are they missing or wrongly implemented we check it up then after validating and performing the user acceptance testing, we release the software and make it operational. Then we take a set 3 and we go for release 3. Like this, one spiral is representing one release of the software and system which is operational. Then to that we add up another set of requirements, we go for release 2. Then we add up another set of requirements then we go for release 3. Like that we continuously evolve the process. So, like this we build our spiral model means spiral model requires clear cut specifications then we go ahead with the implementation. However, the most of the time the formal specification which must be stable may not be available to start our project. The software which we released 
may be facing some problems when we made it totally operational on the field. There can be incompatibility issues. The system which we tested in our organization before release, it is working properly. However, when you move from testing environment to the deployment environment, something is wrong, it is not operational. At that time, we may have to add up some service packs or support packs, so that the system works properly. So, like that we may be providing some maintenance or some errors have been noticed, those are to be addressed or some small change request may be coming <coughs> like uh, changes in uh, representation of the user interface or moving from one server connectivity to another server or earlier the company was using uh, one server, now it is moving to some other server, we have to switch over to connecting to the new server, such things may be coming. So, all such things are good candidates for the maintenance. Here, the when we see discontinuities in a spiral process like requirements and design documents may not be seamlessly transferred from the developing organization towards the or the team or organization which is taking care of evolving the system to make it operational. If that seamless is the transfer of the knowledge is not taking place, then we go for software maintenance, where any change which is coming is accepted, we have got a separate process of change management, there is a change control being board being established, the requests which are coming from the field or from the user or customer or the any uh, problems related to environment, incompatibility, all such things and any small changes are being captured as changes, then we are going to put across to change control board and change control board is deciding whether to accept fully or some of them can be acceptable, some may be rejected like that they make the decision and then pass on those things for implementation. So, like this in the software maintenance, there would not be any proper like a spiral model, there would not be any proper documentation and transfer of requirements and design documents seamlessly from development to evolution, but the changes are coming which are actually the triggered from the system which may be having some problem and then we take them and go for some changes. So, may require separate contract because once the system is being built by one development organization, the project is seeing an end, user acceptance testing is being carried out, the client is saying that the development project re reaches an end. Now, this project might have been the passed to some other company which is taking care of maintenance. At that time, the company which is taking care of maintenance will be signing the separate agreement and then they start the overall activity. So, development organization can be different and the maintaining organization may be totally different. So, that is taking place here and they start continuing with the maintenance and all other process related activities, the maintenance company will be taking care of. The third type of approach for software evolution is the operation and evolution of custom software. Here a software company develops software and customers own development team then take over the operation and evolution. So, here the company builds the basic structure and uh, they pass on the entire responsibility to the customer. 
the customer's operational staff is taking the entire responsibility of any changes that need to be incorporated including copyrights and intellectual property rights and other things have been transferred from the development organization to the development the uh, customer customer operation team itself is taking care of the entire software evolution next one is coming the next approach in software evolution is coming in the form of customization and operation of productized solutions most of the erp packages are coming in the form of semi productized solutions means the product is having all the features but it is not operational if we have to make the product operational like erp packages and other things we have to purchase the licenses and uh, we have to customize it by the configuring that particular product to the need of an organization for example if education institute wants to have erp solution then they are getting the the erp productized solution through license agreement after purchasing it the team which is uh, actually passing the product to the education institute will be coming and they are working with uh, the education institute the product company it is working with the education institute of defining the different uh, configuration related the information and install the software and make it operational while doing it they may be transferring the knowledge of how to work on the system to the education institute however here only configuration related things can be changed by the customer that is education institute but it is not allowed to change the original productized solution software if any modification has to be done for that productized solution only the parent the company which is building that erp package shall be informed for any such changes and that company only will be modifying it and deploying software now we shall take the fifth approach in the software evolution which is called as software evolution and servicing in india most of the companies are actually service oriented companies what actually they do so customer is actually passing the responsibility in the form of requirement specification and these companies build and they transfer back the entire product to the client organization here the what happens is initial development is actually taking place and after building this then system has to evolve we go on incorporating changes we take another set of changes we incorporate it then we go for new version like this the evolution of the software may be taking place here means a set of change request will be coming the change request will be put in the form of evolution evolving the software then we are actually servicing it so how we service it it comes in uh, two forms one is giving the patches means uh, very urgent uh, changes second one is uh, very systematic changes so we we may be providing any of these services to ensure that the software which has evolved continues to operate and then we make it operational and after some years one version must be removed and new version has to be made operational at that time we have to phase out the earlier version software and replace it by new software so here we carry out these tasks 
in four stages. One is initial development, second one is evolution, third one is servicing and fourth one is phase out. So, in the phase one of the system life cycle, initial development phase, we the build the software, we roll out the software and then the software is used successfully. When software is being used successfully, there can be some need arising either to add or to modify or to remove something from the software. Such things are being captured as the change request. Then we are interested in evolving that system or software by incorporating those changes. Here we take those changes which are coming as uh, change proposals and we analyze them. After analyzing it, we may accept or reject those such changes and if we accept them, then we make either addition or modification or removal from the existing software and come out with the modified software and then we are going to deploy it. When we are going for such a deployment with a small tactical changes, we have to remember here that uh, the software evolution and servicing is dealing with very small tactical changes. There are three types of changes. One is strategic changes which may be dealing with coming out with entirely new the software which is totally different, which is totally replacing the earlier software that is called uh, the strategic changes. Second one is tactical changes, some changes in the rules, regulations, business rules all such thing may be coming and third one is operational changes. So, here when you are talking about servicing, we are dealing with the tactical things means some changes of business rules, some uh, changes in the formula, all such things we may be carrying out or we may be performing fine tuning we may be carrying out, such things we carry out and make the system operational. We are not touching the basic structure of the system, we are only ensuring that the system is going to operate with a better value. So, because of that we say that small tactical changes are being incorporated here. However, here the company understands that the system has reached a stage after some years that it has to be replaced by some other system. The current version may not be very much useful if you continue its operation. So, when such thing comes to the mind or notice of the company, then company starts planning to phase out and replace it by new software. So, when the company decides to replace such a software by new version, then the strategy to phase out the earlier version and replace it by new version of the software or system shall be worked out. There are different strategies that are available. One is direct switch over means here the old software is totally being uh, removed and uh, new software is being uh, installed and directly we switch over to the new software in a single shot. Or second strategy that is available to us is stepwise switch over means part of the functionality of the new system we install it and make it operational along with the current existing system. As and when we understand that new software which we are installing that particular functionality is working properly, then that functionality is being uh, 
taken in and replacing the old software. Now after that we take another part and then replace old software. Like that we continue in a stepwise manner. Small part is going to be replaced in a stepwise manner. Fourth one is, third one is we make both the system to uh, work in parallel. So, whenever we see some changes required in the new system compared to the earlier one, we go on modifying it, modifying it, modifying it. Then after some time, we understand that new software which we want to replace by removing the earlier one means we want to replace the new software by removing the earlier one. So, if it has to take place, the new software must be stable. When we get that feeling after conducting lot of alpha testing, beta testing, internal beta, external beta, marketing beta and then with a set of final users when we test it by running it in parallel, when you get the confidence that thus this particular new system has reached the stability and we can remove the earlier one and switch over to the new, then we do it that is parallel switch over. Like that different strategies are available to us. Now, with uh, selecting any of these approaches, we can proceed with evolu evolution processes. In case of evolution processes, the our approach will be varying, software evolution process will vary based on the type of the software being maintained. There are different types of uh, softwares available like real time systems, mission critical applications, then client server applications, mainframe systems or embedded software systems like that or internet based web applications. So many uh, different types of software are available. Now, which software has to be maintained? That is one of the criteria which will be having direct influence on our software evolution process. Second thing which is actually having impact on our software evolution process is the development processes that are used in an organization. If the development processes are high maturity like uh, CMM I level 3 and above, then the documents are very stable and very good uh, documentation also are being maintained towards uh, errors and defect logs and good uh, the knowledge transfer happens from software development organization towards maintenance organization. At that time, the uh, software evolution will be easy. But if the software is being built either by using agile approach or by using uh, the immature processes or informal processes, then there cannot be proper documentation related to requirement specification and design documents and there may not be any proper traceability metrics and defect logs that might have may not be available. Under such scenario, then we may have to look at different approach. It is having direct uh, implication on the way in which we are going to evolve our software. The third one is the skills of the people involved. Are they having uh, experience in the similar projects in the past? Do they have domain knowledge? Are they having a uh, functional expertise in operating the system? And uh, what is the average experience level of the people? Whether they are exposed to similar technologies in the past in which uh, the system has to incorporate changes and other things. So, such things play a very important role. Fourth point is past experience of the organization in similar type of projects. So, usually if the companies are having a good teams, having a good experience in the platforms, they are capable enough to implement and maintain and evolve the software systematically. If the companies are trying to use the entirely new technologies and if they have to work on entirely new database uh, technologies and if they have to work on platform where they do not have any past experience, then the evolution process 
will be struggling a lot, people struggle a lot to evolve the software. So, when we want to undertake such projects, then nature of evolution processes play very crucial role. So, the evolution processes can be totally informal, where change requests mostly come from the customer and end user on telephone or for informal communication or conversation. Some may be customer and user may be calling on the phone, I am facing some problem here. Then at that time the way in which you carry out will be totally different. For example, the set of box is uh, actually being used in our in your home and suddenly signal is not coming. Then at that time possibly we use uh, customer care and we call them saying that set of box is not working properly, signals are not coming. So, at that time such informal request is being considered on the phone and they it can be recorded then proper action to ensure that that set box set of box is being rectified and system continues operation. Second one is totally formal processes. Larger the system, higher the complexity of the system, number of users are more, then we cannot take the informal path. We have to go for formal processes. Here the, for the entire evolution process is taking place in a very staged manner and at the end of every stage there is a formal and very good quality documents are being created and those documents are of great help in carrying out our evolution processes. Now, if we have to evolve any software, then the basic need is how are we going to identify the changes and evolve the entire software. I repeatedly mentioned the change may be coming from the business need of the customer where the competing uh, company may be using uh, good features and they may be using advanced technologies or some new technology that has come to the market and the users are insisting on it. Then the request we can consider as a one request change request or we may identify the change request from the errors and uh, defects of the existing system which is working in the software. The, uh, the software which is in operation and we consider it to implement it or new user requirements that may be coming. So, we consider it and try to implement it. So, like this we are getting the existing requirements that have not implemented from the traceability metrics of the past release. We may be getting this information or defects or errors that have not been fixed that error logs and defect logs we may be considering and try to implement it in current version or business requirements. So, all such things are coming as changes. We have to identify such changes. After identifying it, we are actually going for some analysis. So, in the analysis after identifying the processes, we are actually uh, go for change purposes. So, after we identify which must be accepted, which shall be rejected, which is falling within the scope of the project and current version. We decide on it and then whatever the changes that have been identified, part of the things that we are picking up and make it as a scope are coming in the form of the, the change proposals. We take these change proposals, then we pass it to software evolution process. Such change the proposals are being considered and they are to be incorporated in the new version of the software that we are planning. So, we use software evolution process to incorporate such change proposals and after implementing it we come out with uh, the new system that must be deployed. So, in brief after identifying the change, the change uh, the proposals are coming as the input and we have to go for software evolution process. So, this software evolution process which takes uh, the change proposals, how it is going to work? It works in a very staged manner. Basically, four stages are being involved here. 
first stage is change analysis where we receive the change request and perform impact analysis. Second stage is release planning and third stage is change implementation and fourth stage is system release. So, in the, the entire software evolution process as proposed by Arthur in 1988 that we are considering it. Here the chain requests are coming, then we perform impact analysis, then we are going for release planning. So, which may be incorporating either fault repair or platform adaptation or we may be thinking about system enhancement. After planning such a release, then we go for change implementation, then we go for system release. We shall consider the first phase which is talking about change analysis, receiving change request and perform impact analysis. So, we receive the change requests which are coming in the form of uh, the formal change proposals. These change proposals are being triggered by business changes, new user requirements or the making adaptable to new platform or errors or defects in the current system which is being operational or new non-functional requirements. Such change proposals are being formally recorded and they have been passed for analysis phase. Here change control board will be there, they are considering such proposals and check it up, they perform impact analysis. During the impact analysis, what changes were made to the software, what changes shall be made to the software and who shall make these changes. When the changes to be made, by what time we have to complete the change implementation and we have to go for rationale why the changes are made, is there any business value, then which are the configuration items that need to be changed, then how much time, effort and budget is required to incorporate such changes. Once such impact analysis is being done, then we go for release planning. In the release planning, uh, what uh, are you addressing any faults, are you incorporating any new changes or are you moving to some other platforms? We have to consider the scope of our release and here in the release uh, planning, so by when we start the, the actually going for the next version release when is the project starting date of implementing the changes and scope of such release, we have to decide and then incorporating it, we have to work out. And when we make such changes, how we are going to build in our software? So, are we using any build or the automation tools, build and install automation tools that we have to decide and we have to decide on backup and recovery process, whatever we create in the new version, we have to maintain in configuration management tool and we have to decide on backup, how many types of backups we are going to maintain and if something fails, how we recover, we have to decide on that. Then decision on addressing changes that we have to make and after we implement such changes, there is a need for us to retest and regression testing and we have to decide on it. And we have to decide on the ro rollout plan of the new version, how we are going to lowering out into the operational environment and then we have to decide on the release of the live updates and phases so that the system is going to work. So, version management, then product management, environment management and process management are to be considered in release planning. Then we are moving into how we are going to incorporate. When we try to go for release planning, we have to understand that there is a need to implement two types of uh, the what you call changes. One is emergency repair process. Here change requests are coming from the customer saying that customer the particular product is non-operational and we analyze the such changes and we analyze the code, source code 
to identify the possible malfunctioning uh, programming components and we modify the source code and then we integrate and deploy it. And here we shall not use any formal processes because the system is unoperational there, inoperational there and customer is waiting for quick fix without uh, following any informal process by believing in uh, the team's competency we fix it and then make the system operational. Second one is formal change implementation. Here the totally it is a formal process. It is a formal stage approach and every release and rollout is systematically planned. We go for proper build, configuration management and backup strategy and consistency across documents and uh, work products are being maintained. In uh, hot fixes, there is always some inconsistency across documents and work products, whereas in the formal change implementation, there is a consistency. Here, proposed changes are being considered and we perform requirement analysis. We do it iteratively to check whether the proposed changes are mapped against our requirements. If the proposed changes are falling within the scope of the project, then we accept it and we update the requirements and also we go for software development and go for build and release of the software which has incorporated such changes. Then we go for change implementation. Once we accept such changes, then we identify configuration items means whatever software components and documents that are being affected by such a change, we identify them and then the we distribute to different uh, people to incorporate it and we give access to the configuration management tool and the people are picking up such configuration items from the configuration management tool and they are going to they make modifications into these uh, source code or documents and other things. After making the modifications, they put back into configuration item, configuration management tool and new software is being built and then the after migrating all the changes, we are going to deploy into the final the environment. Everything depends on how effectively we put configuration management tool in practice. After doing this, then we have to release our system. So, this in involves creating the library in configuration management tool. After creating the library, we are going to implement backup and recovery processes of maintaining all these configuration items which underwent change must be maintained properly into the configuration library and we go for system integration to pick up these configuration items and then create the new version of the software and then we perform retesting and regression testing and whatever bugs are being reported in retesting and regression testing and also during a build all are being addressed and fixes are being carried out and we after correcting this we are going to build the final version and then we release. After releasing it the customer is going to carry out the user acceptance testing and also he carries out field tests to check the stability of the product. Then finally we take uh, approvals and sign offs and we baseline the release means informal changes shall not be carried out. Thus, as a summary, software shall undergo changes so that it can be operational, useful, relevant and is of value. Software evolution processes can be informal and formal and uh, using either informal or formal processes based on whether we have to give hot fixes or systematic changes into the software, we have to carry out uh, evolution processes, may need emergency fixes or systematic change implementation emergency fixes are informal and inconsistency across work products and documentation can be seen whereas change implementation where systematic implementation of new changes take place in a staged approach with consistency across work products and documentation. With this we come to the end of this session on software evolution and we have considered different evolution approaches and processes. Thank you.